Kakiso Marisha and I'm on football stage. Hola KG, friend. Nice to meet you. I think it's just good to when I talk to you and hear your American accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the car. That's the car. So, that side, do they call it soccer or football? Uh, soccer. So, what you don't get uh, confused? Uh, obviously, the first time, obviously, you do get confused, but you understand with this, they have a sport they call football, so that's where the problem is. So once you understand and get to understand with you, there's another sport by football, then you start picking it up and start getting used to it. Mm. So yeah, that's how I got used to it. So no, no one even mentions a wet disky there. They don't know it. Uh, nah, <laughs> it's, it's just you. If you see like South Africans and all of that, you guys speak your language, obviously. Yeah. And yeah, like Americans are very people who are interested in other cultures and languages and all of that. So now, nah, but like they try to pick up like small words that they can like just communicate with with you just to make you feel at home, you know. Yeah. So that's what I've picked up with my time being there. So, but well, some of my friends used to like try to call it like a tea ski and all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. Before we, we get into the football thing, let's just understand uh, who's who's KG. Um, KG, it's Kakiso Alshonero Marisha Kulele Tamine Soweto. Um, 23 years of age. Um, been a footballer since I was like five years. Um, also an inspiring um, football journalist or football doing football law. And yeah, anything that has to do with sports. Um, a sports fanatic. Been particip have participated in a lot of sports like cricket, athletics. So yeah, that's who I am. And the nickname Cream, where does it come from? <laughs> so there's one of my best friends from a Damini. I grew up with him. Um, I, well, at first I was uh, taking med, so he felt to I play. I had a bit of Tulani Serrero in me, so that's where I actually picked it up. And so then you took from there, there. Yeah, I was actually I was actually a skillful player back then, until you know, like trying out new positions, growing up also, you know, like styles change as you grow up. So I think. Me growing up, like I had lost that that part of me of being a skillful player. I still, I still am, but like not like before. You yeah. know, I've just picked up like new habits and all of that. So. Yeah, you know, in, in football, uh, people when you see a player, maybe when wherever they are, say whatever league they play up there, you know, when they are twenty, twenty one, and so on. They've been through a lot of clubs. Yeah. Very few you'll find that they've actually played for maybe for for an academy from age six, seven six. up until they get to senior team. It's very rare. Yeah. Yeah. But you, your football journey, where did it start for you? Um. Uh. When I was, I think around between six and seven, I started for uh, for a team called Lamini called Lamini Young Stars, and then by the age of seven, um, that's when I started with Acosta Palaces Apprentice Academy. Um, until I went on till 2012 when I was 12 years old and then I was promoted to a Pirates uh, development but it was closed down I think 2013 so we came back for that's when Castle Palace started a development team uh, we were the first few uh, players who played for that development team and then 2015 I think when E Pirates reopened that's when we started playing again for Pirates which brought straight from Castle Palacios and then yeah, from then I've been playing for the same team since 2021, when I was 21 years old. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, the, the legendary old man is is linked with Orlando Pirates. So yeah, when yeah. you are at APAA and you're Orlando Pirates, yeah, it's like... It's the same thing. thing. So, it was the same thing back then, so yeah. So your, your blood is just black yeah, it's and white. Been, it's, always been, it's always been, yeah, it's always been. <laughs> yeah, so how, how was it like uh, uh, learning from, from the legendary old man? You know, he's very, very uh, good with development very knowledgeable how was it like for you the experience um it was a great experience to be honest because you tend to learn a lot and um being involved with a huge club like orlando pirate itself like it's, a, it's an honor and a big name obviously where you have to like there's always demands and with demands is um forced growth which is what you need when you're growing up you know so i think i've learned a lot with i don't think i'll be the player that i am today and being a Pirates and Augusto Palacios uh, player, you don't just learn of being a, an athlete, but also like being a man, you know, how to treat women, how to, how to treat your family and all of that. So 
I think with the values that I've, that I've grown up with, um, both teams have helped me shape the person that I am today within the community also, not just like footballing wise. So it was a great experience for me, which helped me shape me into the person that I am today. Yeah. And uh, you know, obviously there's a link between the, the two clubs, yeah. uh, the Apprentice Academy by the, the Old Man and the Orlando Pirates. Uh, and having been there for a very, very long time, you might have, you might have played, must have played with a lot of players. Most of the players yeah. who've been, who've been yeah. to ABA and all the parade, you'll yeah. probably know them. And uh, who are some of the guys that you, you, you played with that some, you know, um, football people will know? So, uh, I didn't play with them, but I, we were, when they were here, I was here. Um, it's U Tebucho Tlolani, mm -hmm. who's with, I don't know if he it was alone or what, but like, he was here at Tlebucho Tlolani. Um, U, um, what's his name? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Doom Togosis Dube, um, Tabiso Munyani, Lyle Foster, um, uh, what's his name? Gezana was also here at some point. Or oh, before? Before crossing. Cheesy, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> I've, I've played with a lot of them. Uh, Azola Chobeni, Tabiso Sesani, who's with the first team now. Mm. Uh, actually, a lot of them, a lot of them. Yeah, and when you are in an academy, right, obviously some of these guys were in different age groups, so you don't yeah. necessarily play with them yeah, in the yeah. same team, but you are all within the same academy. Yeah. And there's always those, you know, three, two guys that you know, it's like, this is Angel, this, yeah. this is your blind, this is your affair. Yeah. During your time here, who are some of the players that you look you look like and said, hey, these guys are going far? I think most of us knew Lyle Foster was going far. So like, even uh, back then, you no, could no, tell? No. At the age, when we started playing together, age of 13, we knew Lyle was going far from, because you could see, like, um, like in terms of structure, like body structure, in terms of like how he played back then, with also the help Yaga prof, like he was going far, we knew he was going far. Tabiso Munyani, we knew he was going far with his pace, body. You know, like when you're young, you check like the body yes. structures and all of that, and you like, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't given that part. Yeah, you know? sure. <laughs> but, but like, I, for me, like the Tabiso, I knew he was going far. Lyle, I knew he was going far. Um, Mama Twins, we knew like there's a lot of players I feel deserve to be far right now, but mm. you know like things happen differently. You know, God's plans are different. So, but I've played with a lot of quality players, especially the ones I've actually played up in the team with. I've learned a lot from them, and you know just meeting them, playing with them was was a huge honor. Also, so yeah. Yeah, obviously with the prof, he, he oversees everything, but. Yeah. Uh, different age groups will have different coaches. Yeah. Who are some of the coaches that you know you will say contributed uh, to your development as a player? Um, firstly, I would say Prof because he also coached at some point. Um, and then there's Coach Junior Bing who was with me under 12, 13. There's Coach Bafana, there's Coach Matita, there's Coach Len Solomon who was at Vets and he came here. There's Coach uh, Mike, Mike who's at Sundowns and an analyst, but he coached us at some point. Um, there's actually a lot of coaches. I think for me, all coaches uh, taught me something. All coaches who coached me in my life, I think have, I've picked up a lesson or two from them, you know, because every coach had a different perspective when it came to me. Uh, so I think I picked up a lesson from all my coaches that I've had since I started playing soccer. So you were with the academy, like you say, from like seven to twelve, and then yeah, you and then, go to Paris. Yeah, yeah. So how is it like Buele uh, Lokshini now? You are dressed up, dressed with your uh, It's it's uh, <laughs> obviously now people are proud of you. Life changes, you know. Perspectives change also. Uh, at first, like I think um, I had a I, I had a bad mindset about like why I was playing. You know, I used um, I used me playing for Pirates for the wrong reasons at first. But I mean, you know, coming from a family that I come from, it's 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 this they you have to listen whether you you're big you can be a big gun outside, you know. Mm -hmm. But um they've helped me adjust through the fame. I'll call it fame because at that time you're playing for a huge team, you're young, T V, television, whatever. So I think um that on its own, my family grounded me to stay disciplined and just still remember the end goal for me. So I think it was it was a great feeling knowing Guti like where Zamini I'm representing Zamini Soweto you know um, playing for a huge team obviously representing my family so um, first things first you have to protect yourself and your family name before anything 
So that's what um carried me throughout my seasons with Orlando Pirates. So with 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 what it came with, the demands and everything, it was a great time for me. And again, I'll say it was an honor playing for for the DDC team. Yeah, that DDC team, uh, because obviously you know in development, not everyone you start with, <laughs> you'll be with. Was, yeah. you know, whether I'm sure some players by the time you got to DDC, they were they were not there. Yeah. But tell us about that DDC team that you 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 played for. Yeah, yeah that DDC team was so <laughs> special. Um, it was so special. Um, I think we were just more than a team. We were a family, you know. We still have family till today. I mean, we still communicate today on a regular basis, even if like we all like in different places. So I think that team was very special and uh, we had a different bond, you know. I, I, I'd like to believe we had a different brand, bond from other teams. Um, like we, we understood each other. We used to gel so much to the point of I still, I still like wish we were still together even today, mm. but like that's how football is. Like, you know, not you're not gonna go everywhere together, you know, but I wish. Because that team was very special. Besides anything, we were a family. Uh, I'm trying to recall. I'm old now. My memory yeah. is not good. The team made about, about general. Yeah, Bodisi Nembangwa, Sviso Lutuli, Tabiso Sesani, um, Tabiso Munyani played with us at some point. Lyle played with us at some point. There's Siabong Abuda, Lisonolo Sipeng, Litabo Matabas, Tabiso Butupela, um, the Twins, Kopano Tunzani. Um, we had we also played with a few first team players of Brilliant Kuzo, who were in Sandy Lands. Um, I forgot the one name uh, from the first team. Those are good players you mentioned. They are both Buddha. They are both Buddha. Yeah, they are high quality. Quality, or, yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, now when you are in the DDC, right? Yeah, just a step, one step away from, from, from senior, team, team, yeah. senior team. Yeah. And but for you, it, it didn't go that route. And normally, you know, with some, especially under Pirates, you've seen some of them, yeah, uh, being moved out to NFD, yeah. some going to Pele Pele. Uh, what happened with you? Um, so, so basically, I had um, applied for a scholarship way before like 2017 to go. That was before I even played the DDC. Mm. Like, I didn't think I would even make the DDC team, to be honest. And hence, I took the, the the responsibility to say, you know what, let me just continue with my studies also, you know. And then um, 2018, luckily, fortunately, I got promoted to the MDC team where I was able to play for three seasons. Um, I got my scholarship 2018. But um, with me going into the into the MDC team, I had now hope to to know. I thought this was impossible going into the DDC team. What's stopping me from believing that I'd get to the first team? Mm. Hence, that's why my process to go to the U.S. took longer than usual. So from 2018 to 2021, I was just delaying the process to say, let me give it one more season, let me give it one more season, let me give it one Until it got 2021, unfortunately, I was like, you know what, let me just, let me just give school a try and see what happens with me from there. Like that, that was my point of view of how everything happened. But let's go back. You say you really didn't think... Yeah. You make the step to the MTC team. Yeah. Why was that? Um, no reason. To, I I just wasn't that confident. I think it's just a matter of confidence, you know. I didn't think Uta was gonna make the, the 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 team. I think also the way everything happened, it happened so quick because we were not supposed to be in the. Um, there was already a what's this MTC team, mm. and then uh, I think Pirates then bought a status go go Vodacom. That's how the space opened up for us. And I think there wasn't time for Pirates to make an MDC team. I think that's how the space opened up oh, for so us. So some players so, moved to, to... No, no, no. There was a team There was a team that was mainly for MDC. Yes. That was there that time. So we thought, no, nah, there's a team for MDC. Until the status was bought and confirmed. And then there was a team. And then everyone who was in the MDC, the 2017-2018 season, went on to Vodacom. So there wasn't a team for... Oh, so so they took a risk with us because it was a thing. They gave us a challenge because you get to the finals or engine and then you play MTC. Simple. Then we got to the to the finals and then that's how we played the MTC. Okay. Yeah. So the time you're thinking. Ah, no, no, no. <laughs> we for uh, for me, I wasn't really mm. like I played with a lot of quality players. Like also that you need you know sometimes you need to be realistic with uh, your goals and stuff. So I think at that time I was being realistic with my goals. You know, so I I just I just wasn't confident. 
So clearly if you are applying for a scholarship at the time it means you are someone who was taking their education very seriously while playing football. At, at that time you so you obviously didn't think you'll make it to professional football. Yeah. And you you know, academic wise you thought yeah. as well you might you need to pursue that. Yeah. Um I wouldn't say I took school seriously. I just wanted to make my family happy at that time. I wasn't really interested <laughs> into school. Like I'm being I'm being honest. Yeah, man. yeah. Like for me it was okay, uh, do your school work, pass your matric, give your family a matric certificate and you're done. Hence mm. I didn't study for like three years because I was thinking, you know what? I gave them what they wanted, but again, I don't think they were satisfied. Yes, they were happy I got my matric, but like they're not just satisfied. So they because, wanted you to pursue yeah, maybe and then, a degree. And yeah, it's a thing that my dad always wanted. He used to say, even if you go pro at like age nineteen, I will be dollar for the school. You can go on and study at like thirty four or continue with the studies online, or you know. So for me, it was also an opportunity to go uh, give a try with another country, see how you know the other countries are learn different cultures learn different um religions you know also so just being around different people so that's how the whole thing came about yeah the opportunity obviously you've applied for a scholarship yeah. but you, you could apply for a scholarship a tax a uj events yeah. why why america um so there was a friend of mine who gave me the form the form uh the card the business card she was like, just give it a try because she wanted. She played netball, so she was like, just give it a try and see how. So with with her just doing that, it was just me like giving it a try. It wasn't anything serious at first. Yeah. Until like I had to sit down with my dad and I sp we spoke about it. And like, like I mean, don't you, like my dad is a person who traveled a lot when he was young and traveled when he was also. He always wanted us to travel also, so it was a chance for me to travel. So I used soccer in a way for me to travel and also like finish everything that I've always wanted to finish. Like my goals, like playing soccer, uh, studying and all of that, get my qualification elsewhere. So yeah, I think that's that's mainly about just giving it a try anywhere else, you know, Give, having a fresh start yeah. to say. So so when it, when it finally happens, uh, which university did you go to and which uh, city in America? Um, so I went to Iowa um, at North Iowa Area Community College. Um, yeah, I was there for the past two years. I graduated last month. Um, uh, had a bad first season. Had a, had the worst first season. Um, but I think my second season, like it came about, it was way, way, way better. And I was satisfied with everything that was happening at that time. Yeah. Uh, you know, from what from what we can see uh, in America, there's this culture of student athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, focus on uh, pursuing yeah. sports while also pushing Push academics. academics how, yeah. how 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 do you find a balance, or is there something different that they do to ensure that you are able to to excel in both? Yeah. So uh, for them, simple. If you're not doing good in your books, then you can't play. That's number one. Mm -hmm. So, but also they they have to take responsibility of making time for you to have time to study and time to play soccer. So they can't maybe like for example, yeah, if two players have classes at like four they can't have training at four they have to make training either it's earlier or later than that so but everyone is satisfied with the time so i think also them just making schedules that uh complement both the team and a player as an individual there it makes it easier for us to balance the schoolwork, you know so and also schools are uh, hands-on when it comes to athletes with their schoolwork. like i wouldn't say you get special treatment but like they focus more, not more on them, but like they try to help them to make sure the results are on point, um, like everything's fine so that you don't miss any games, you can't miss any practices and all of that. And you're always part of the team because also if you're not playing and okay, you can, maybe you can, you're playing your best football, but like you're not doing well in school, then your scholarship gets taken away because oh, yeah. what's, what's more important there is the, the marks. So because if you don't have the marks, then you can't play. So that's how it is. So it also pushes you as a person. It's a motivation on its own to say, I mean, I want to play, but me, for me to play, I have to do well in my school books, which, which, which is what's happening. So how was the adaptation process for you? Obviously, you moved from a different from South Africa to America now. Uh, obviously, you have to perform on the field, also perform academic-wise. How, how was the adaptation for you? Like I said earlier, I had a bad first season because like everything happened so quick. I decided like 2021 
April to say, right, let me just go give it a try in the US. And I was leaving in July. So like I wasn't ready. Like it was a thing that happened so quick. So I had a bad first season. I think I also ended up being depressed at some point. So I came back home to say, you know what, let me recuperate. Let me take six months home, take my online classes, you know. And with me, with the lessons that I've had taken from my first, from my first five months, I took it in with my second year, second, second, uh, my second year. And like now that I had known everything that was happening, uh, it worked for me. It worked very much, and yeah, I can say like it worked very well because now I had learned everything, you know. And I had like got started, started getting used to like just being alone, and being the only South African. Also, like you miss the smallest things. You miss like just speaking your language. You miss. You miss the food, you miss, you know, you miss the smallest thing. Like, yeah, like, you know, so, like, all I can say is if, if you're planning on, like, moving to a different country, like, just, just be patient, patient on yourself, like, just take care of yourself because it might not be easy, you know, until the second time, you know, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's a tough adaptation, but, like, it's, 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 it's worth it, I'll say it, it's worth it. No, because from, from us, looking from outside, we see Instagram pictures and yeah. think, ah, KG is having a good time. Nah, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie. That's a lie. Yeah. Ah, that's a lie. Mm. Nah, that's a lie. But uh, in terms of now building your character, obviously, as a person and as an athlete, yeah. those f tough months, how important were you for you? I know it was bad, but yeah. in terms of building you up now, your, your character. Um, you know, some of us succeed from our pain, I guess, to say, you know, like, um, like I'm afraid to, to, to disappoint myself, number one. So with the disappointment that I had with my first season, I couldn't, I knew how I was going to feel if I disappointed myself the second time. And that's not something that I wanted, to be honest, you know. So you learn from everything that happened at first and use that, like, to, to your advantage because you were there. You were there the first time, so you can't repeat the same mistake twice, you know. That's what I think. So... With me going back the second time, like, it was the smallest things that um, that helped me, like, my friends used to make sure, like, they called me every day. Like, you'd, you'd swear I had a schedule of my friends. Maybe one is calling me on Monday, another one is calling me on Tuesday. It's just, like, just there trying to motivate me all the time, remind me the end goal. My family also, my mom called me every day, my dad called me every day, you know. It's just them, like, just trying to motivate me to say, you know what, we're still, we still with you, even though we're far away. And that's the kind of support I had also. Um, with me speaking to them the first time I came back they understood with no this is this is what he suffered with so this is how you're gonna help him you know so also I'd say I'd give my friends and my family a credit to say um, they helped me be the person that I am today and also uh, in terms of character like uh, you're forced to grow you know you're forced to grow because now you're on your own you know there's no crying to your mom there's no crying to and you hardly get time to speak to them because of like time differences and all of that so you're forced to grow up and be a man also to man up and say, you know what, I can do this on my own. Uh, you're forced to learn that sometimes you need to just push yourself. That's, that's, just, that's just that. You know, it's not as easy as me being able to talk to my mom when I get home today and say, hey, I had a bad day. Sometimes you just have to cry yourself to sleep and, you know, that's how, that's how you have to deal with that, unfortunately. But once you get used to the process, you, you'll start enjoying yourself then. Uh how serious do they take soccer? They say, because I, you know, I try to follow on these things, and they see it's, it's university football, but you know the information is readily available. Yeah. You know, here, in the, you know, in our country, in APC, Monte Pelic information is not that readily available. Sometimes it's difficult to get, and that's a dead tier league yeah. in, in our country. And you know, you made the, the regional teams for yeah. something they take. How serious are they at that level? Uh, I don't think it's that serious, to be honest, because I mean, a season you play like what? 18 games mm. maybe you play like 25 max uh, if you go to like nationals and all of that so i don't think it's a uh, it's really like serious um until you like start playing like fully you know like mls football and all of that but for me for me mainly going to the u.s it was like you know what let me just also take my uh my schooling as serious as i take my football so i like put it on the same level you know mm just to make sure that I'm 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 getting I'm hitting two beds with one stone, you know. That's basically that. So it wasn't really like more of maybe soccer and all of that because I understand something. Me getting a qualification in the US, I'd like to believe that I'd have um job opportunities this side with the qualifications that side, you know. Yeah. So my plan was maybe I'd come back, play pro this side, 
or if I don't make it that side or just stay that side work and all of that with the job opportunities you get that side also you know so yeah there are options yeah there's a lot of options now you 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 graduated uh, in yeah. Iowa uh, now we are moving to to University of Houston yeah uh, what qualification did you graduate in and uh, how did this move to now Houston come about Okay, so in the U.S., the, the education system works like, so it's different to, the, to South Africa. So if you go to college, it's a two-year. If you go to university, it's a four-year. So if you go to a, uh, college first and then you have your first two years and then you finish your two years with the university. So I got my junior degree. I don't know if that's what they call it, but it's like a junior degree or a diploma. So I'm going to finish it up in, in, my, in the university. So it's, I'm basically doing um, sports management at the moment so yeah that, but i'm going to mix it up with business management so i have both qualifications qualification but again as you go there you still same play football thing. yeah that ah, same thing <laughs> same thing yeah same thing <laughs> ah, it's, it's a cool example now in terms of the pathway you know a player like uh, the out here say david tonutsik yeah he went through the, yeah, the yeah, university yeah. system yeah. and went through the draft he now plays in the yeah. mls now in terms of the pathway how from where you are what, what what's the path towards MLS? Uh, I think firstly, I think also like you have to go to a D1 school, which is a uh, luxury that I didn't have with mm. all costs and all of that, all of that. But also, also my management, you know, I couldn't get like um, good schools in the US to say D1 schools where you can like actually like compete with the best, you know. Mm. So with him, I think he went to the best schools from the beginning okay. to and hence it was easier for him to be recognized um, earlier but like I, f I also say like his journey might not be the same as mine so I might be going to a D2 then an NIA then I, I go the same end with him maybe MLS but it's all about hard work, hard work for me at this point uh, I'm gonna try everything try to play summer league I'm gonna try you know but yeah he's he's I'm, I'm, I'm happy there's someone from South Africa who's actually doing well in the MLS also yeah, tell us, man, about the system, how it's structured. Because, like you say, there's D1, there's D2, and uh, you know, sometimes I'll make an example. Uh, Snort Olo Sesane is at a different university, but yeah. for the summer, he, she plays somewhere yeah, else. Yeah. How does that work? So, summer league is like a summer during the break. Like now, yeah. I should be playing somebody, but I decided to um, come back home since I had a graduation. I didn't see my family in like a year, so that's that's how I came back. So. There's D1, D2, there's D1, Juco. D1s are like the good schools, like top schools in terms of soccer. Um, and then there's D2 schools, which is like second level, obviously. And like there's these um, um, T3s also. And then there's NAIA and there's NCAA and there's NGC, NG, NJCAA. Yeah, I always confuse those things when yeah. I don't know. NJCAA <laughs> is like Juco's, so it's like your first two years. Yes. And then NCAA is like the top D1s, like the top D1s. Um, so that's where, like, if 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 you wanna be seen, you have to compete for those schools. You have to be playing for those schools. Those schools, are the, like your arrogant states, your but those are the big twelve, you know. Yeah. So yeah, they, that's 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 how it is. So is it possible that obviously, if you can do well where you are, uh, these D ones can see you and perhaps transfer to that university? Um, yeah, I had a few offers from D ones, but also you need to understand that the finances. Okay. If if you're from a D2 JUCO, it's hard for them to give you like a high scholarship because you're not you're not from a good school anyway, you know. Okay. So, I think that's that's where the problem was. So at, at some point you need to settle for a good a good program that you can afford, you know. Like I think I, that's what I did in my in my case when I went when I decided with uh, to stay with to sign with University of Houston Victoria. Um, it's a great program um, and it was something I could afford. And I also look at where it is, um, Houston. Houston is a great city, so that's 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 that that was how I made up my decision. T talking about affordability, initially you went there on a scholarship. Yeah. Now, uh, is it full scholarship or no, there are no. certain portions that you have to pay for? No, there's certain portions you have to pay for. Hey, this must be tough. No, nah, it's, it's dollars. We're it's talking actually, dollars. Yeah, it's actually a lot. So, um, hence, I'm grateful to, 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 to my family. Also, when I spoke about the disappointment, that, that's what's also in mind. I mean, it's my dad sacrificing a lot of money for me, and he has, like, what, three kids? And it's him, like, sacrificing most of the money. And also my family just accepting the sacrifice to say, you know what, you can pay for this person to go. 
elsewhere, you know. So that's those are the things that also keep me going on a daily basis to say, you know what, <laughs> you can't you can't disappoint. You can't disappoint with all the sacrifices that have been made. So you just need to make sure that you work hard. Sometimes working hard also like doesn't mean you're gonna succeed or you know, but just not wasting, you know, just not wasting the money or the time um, your family is invested in you is is how I look at it also. Uh, obviously, you you have to find a balance between academics and school. But yeah. I'm sure in your heart, there's one that you want to pursue. Uh, yeah. I would like to believe it's football. Nah, it is football, no <laughs> doubt. No like doubt. I said, school was school was just something that I was doing for the family, honestly. Um, but also, you you once you you understand or once you like find something that you enjoy, like sports management, for example, it's something that I enjoy. So once you you get there and you enjoy it like it's it, it's also a motivation to say you know what let me just keep continuing to study you know see where i end up also you know so i can say right now i'm in a i'm in a i'm in a space whereby i'm i'm willing to 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 succeed in both you know uh because i'm enjoying both both perspectives of my life which is sports and education and obviously not necessarily that you have to go all the way to the MLS. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. guys like um, yeah. Fega in the, in the USL Championship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also guys in the USL One uh, league. league. Yeah. And you know they they are doing well, yeah. uh, like Moloto, Tituele, yeah. Talsa, and so on. So they, they are, there's a lot of options mm -hmm. for you. But uh, looking at from now, say three to five years, where do you see? Where do you want to see yourself? Okay. So the plan for me right now is I'll be. I'm think um, I'll be playing summer league next season, which is the USL two, mm -hmm. and then hopefully, gradually go up as time goes, we get recognition, and I, we'll take it from there. To be honest, I don't want to, you know, put myself under yeah. pressure, under like under so much pressure, like saying, this is where I'll be in the next five years, or this is where I'll be. But I think whatever's meant for me will happen at some point, you know. Yeah. And coming to SA, is it an option later on? Hey. Hey. <laughs> coming back home with the state that we are in right now, mm. it's, it's a bit tough to decide, you know. But, like, for now, for now, I, I think I'm happy where I am. Really? Which know? position are you playing now? Because yeah, you've changed your position. I, <laughs> I'm not. Dalayong Kindao, Koji. Dalayong Kindao. So. I think it also depends on like the the team system where the coach believes I'm a good perfect fit. Um, like with Pirates, I played right wing, right back. I taking mid at some point. Um, with some teams, I played as a striker. You know, so mm. I think that's what Coach Palacios taught me at a young age to be yes. versatile. You know, he helped me adjust to a lot of positions. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with wherever the coach puts me. Uh, as long as he has full confidence in me and I'll also like put 100% effort into doing what he expects from me. Before I let you go, KG, uh, like you said, you've played with some top, top guys in yeah. the development. Yeah. Give us your best 11. Just <laughs> leave out the states. <laughs> the guys you've played with uh, throughout your okay, development um, years. Best 11. Okay, my goalkeeper will be Kopano Tunzani, right back, uh, Sony Mufo Gang. Center back, Opa, uh, Okonko and Tabiso Sasani. Left back, uh, left back, left back, left back. Okay, I'll take Umatlaba. Um, defensive mid, I'll take Boni Um Center mid, I'll take the, uh, the both the twins. And then as a winger, I'll put Sonolo Sipeng at the other side, Tabiso Munyani, and then striker Lyle. Nice. Yeah. My brother, thank you very much yeah, for your time. Know. We wish you all the best uh, you, in the US. Yeah, uh, hopefully, yeah, that's what we want to see. We want to see you in the MLS along this, alongside Abu 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 Plom, Abu Shongwan, and the other guys. Thank you very much, my thank brother. You, sir.